This is the fight of their lives. I put this work in for me. This is my dream, my shot, my time. 58 elite fighters. fighters. Battling eight weeks for eight life-changing contracts. What a fight. The pursuit of a million-dollar championship is still alive for you. Who will survive? An MMA reality competition unlike any other. So much is on the line. Literally anything could happen. That's a TKO victory! Unbelievable! This is the PFL Challenger Series. The PFL Challenger Series is back. It's week seven in Orlando, Florida on Fubo TV. Pro debut night for every fighter on the card. Fighters are in the building. The anticipation grows as each of these individuals makes the walk as a professional for the first time in their mixed martial arts career. Well, even on pro debut night, we have a contract to give away. It'll be five fights, which means five winners eligible for a contract. The PFL will select two finalists. Our celebrity panel will then weigh in and choose a contract winner. And that winner appears in the PFL season in 2022. And here's a look at our pro debut night fight card. Several different weight classes on display, a couple of lightweight bouts, some welterweights in the mix, and even some of the big boys, heavyweights, in our second fight of the night. Sean O'Connell and Kenny Florian next to the cage one more time, and it is the pro debut night here in the Challenger Series. Every fighter started somewhere. The biggest stars in this sport had a pro debut at one point in time. There was a moment where their name became recognizable, and that might be tonight for one of the fighters on the card. Kenny Florian, take us all the way back, way, way back to your <laughs> pro debut. Uh, let's see. I, I remember not being that nervous. I kind of had this blissful ignorance. Uh, uh, wasn't that great of a striker, but as a grappler, also not that great. But uh, no, I ended up using my jiu-jitsu. I took him down, uh, got that TKO finish, and uh, thankfully was able to, to get out without uh, getting too hurt. But I didn't have all these lights and cameras like they have today. Yeah, it's a little bit different when you're making your pro debut on Fubo TV. Well, Look, what about you, man? Yeah, my pro debut, yeah. thankfully, was successful, but it was also my MMA debut. There was no right. such thing as amateur mixed martial arts in my home state when I took to the cage for the first time. So I just bit down on my mouthpiece, and I threw as hard as I could, and eventually the guy fell down. That is a game plan I maintained through my entire <laughs> career. <laughs> this is so true. So not a lot <laughs> changed. <laughs> Julie Stewart-Binks, tell us about your pro debut. Oh, Sean, it's ongoing. It's every single day. I think all of us are still having to do that as well here on the show. But we know that these fighters are not only just making their pro debut, but they have to do it in front of our star-studded celebrity panel. That includes, of course, UFC Hall of Famer Randy Couture. Yeah, that pro debut, that is something that you never forget. It's a surreal experience. And then that cage door slams behind you. And you got to question yourself, like, what did I get myself into? I wasn't sure if I wanted to climb that cage and get the hell out of there or stand in there and fight. Well, we also welcome in virtually tonight, three-time Pro Bowl running back, Todd Gurley. Todd, what was your first game in the NFL like? Um, like Randy said, your, your pro debut is definitely something you'll never forget. Um, being able to recover from an ACL and you know, play the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I remember my first game, I had like seven rushes for 10 yards. Um, you know, it didn't go the way I, I thought it would, but didn't keep me from being discouraged. Um, kept going and was able to make a pretty good career. And back here in studio, we have MMA legend, the phenom, Vitor Belfort. So my pro debut, I had a lot of pressure because I represented Carson Gracie as his best fighter. And I was just 18 years old 
185, fighting a guy, 6'7", 300 something pound, no rules, and I had only one chance. If I impress, I will get my shot to the World Championship in UFC, and, and I made it. I was very nervous, but I think that's helped me a lot. A variety of distinct memories, but Sean, regardless of what happens, these fighters will certainly remember tonight. That is undeniable. Special memories will be made here on Fubo TV. Our first fight of the night happens at Featherweight. This bout brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. Three five minute rounds at 145 pounds. Julie Stewart Binks, let's get these fighters out here. On PFL Challenger Series, we give contestants a chance to introduce themselves. Let's meet our fighters making their pro debut in the Featherweight division. Fighting out of Spokane, Washington, former featherweight and lightweight amateur champion, making my pro debut, Derry Alderman. Derry Alderman landed a buggy choke submission in his last fight, which he learned on YouTube. He called his fighting style wild and greedy, likening it, his will to win, to that of Nate Diaz. Fighting out of Spokane, Washington, former featherweight and <laughs> fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia, undefeated amateur, making his pro debut, Jaylon McDaniel. Jalen McDaniel made his amateur debut less than a year ago. He's the youngest fighter in the Challenger Series at 19 years old. He also made his flying debut to get to Orlando, his first time in an airplane. He said his brother, Raquant, is also a pro boxer. The two of them grew up wrestling. Sean, over to you. We'll take a look at our United States Marine Corps tale of the tape. As Julie mentioned, the youngest fighter on the card tonight, only 19 years of age for Jaylon McDaniel. He is three inches taller. They both weighed in at the featherweight limit. Reach advantage for Jaylon McDaniel as well. Remember, there is a contract on the line tonight. Five winners narrowed down to two finalists. Our celebrity panel chooses from those finalists, and the winner appears in our regular season in 2022. Lauren says it's round number one beside the cage. Our referee to oversee the action is Marcos Perez. And pro debut night on the Challenger Series begins now. Fight. No touch of the gloves. Oh, and a nice right hand from Jalon McDaniel. Forces the shot from Derry Alderman. Yeah, that was a beautiful one, too, to start. I'm, I'm not sure Alderman expected that. Alderman looking to wrestle his way out of trouble here. Jalen McDaniel starting fast. Yeah, just a textbook one, two, as he tries to defend this double leg. Alderman really going for it here. Tremendous counter wrestling here from McDaniel so far. And even in that flurry, excellent job by Jalen McDaniel to listen to his corner. You heard his corner shouting out, wrestle first. Wrestle first, and he was able to fight that takedown up until this point. Now he finds himself on the seat of his shorts. Yeah, Alderman in a much better position now, able to get his shoulders into the hips of McDaniels, where he has much better control. But now McDaniel get right, get, gets right back to his feet here. A lot of action already through the first minute of this featherweight bout. Well, Randy Couture, you can start things off in your pro debut fast, or you can start them off like that. Fury. Yeah, yeah, I think both guys are a little astonished at how that started out, getting dropped right out of the gate. Those nerves, man, they're, they're, you, they're undeniable. And, and we've seen it time and time again. Guys walk out in their first time, they're in great shape. And their conditioning suffers a little from the adrenaline dump. Yes, Jalen did an amazing job, one, two, connecting that two, but now he has to stay away from that wrestle. He has to go back, fighting, go back to the cage, get the middle, and both guys are doing an amazing job. They're looking for to control that round. Todd Gurley 
What do you think of the fast start in this one? Oh, I love the way Jalen came out you know, right out of the start. Um, you know, just, just the whole environment. Young guy should be out here having fun. It looks like he's having a lot of fun right now. Um, we actually share the same birthday, so, you know, I kind of, you know, you know, I'm not picking any sides right now, but, you know, <laughs> I definitely seen that before the fight, for sure. Jalen McDaniel is able to wrestle his way to a top position, and now Derry Alderman trying to grab that Kimura. He'll attempt to use it as a sweep. I'll tell you what, McDaniel Kenny has done a great job when he gets into these positions of landing some important shots. I, I tell you what, I'm really impressed with his composure so far because he's been in some tough situations. Heel hook but right now he's in a tough situation with that heel hook. Alderman trying to twist the ankle, which is gonna affect that left knee. That will create torque on the outside of the knee and cause damage there, but it doesn't matter. That's how you counter it with punches raining down and gravity on your side. McDaniels putting it on Alderman right now. Well, through the first six weeks of PFL Challenger Series action, we've seen folks rewarded for the quick knockouts. We've seen folks rewarded for putting a full uh, gamut of skill on display and already round one not yet gone. Jalon McDaniel has displayed excellent ground and pound, sharp striking on his feet, and some pretty excellent counter wrestling and submission defense. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you know, considering this is his pro debut, I'm really impressed with how he's been able to stay calm under these constant attacks from Alderman. And Alderman's been in some tough situations. He's, you know, dealt with a lot of damage up to his face, to his body, and he continues to fight on. What a fight so far. And now it's Jalen McDaniel looking for that T-Rap. Yeah, he lets go of the Kimura. Now is on that front headlock. Trying to counter. Could maybe go for a Kiti. Big knee to the face. Oh, brutal knee. Now going to the body. Jalen McDaniel. Muscles his way to the top position and goes back to work with his right hand. Beautiful, beautiful job getting under hooks. Now landing some serious ground and pound into the guard of Alderman. Alderman has eaten a lot of shots. McDaniel has to be careful with the inside heel hook now. Has to keep his base here. See if, if he can get his knee to the mat, he'll be in a much better position. But now Alderman has kind of tied himself into the position and can eat a lot of punches here. To Alderman's credit, he has continued to attack with these submission attempts. McDaniel has an answer for everything and continues. He'll close out the round with some more hammer fists wow. from the top. Impressive first round for Jalon McDaniel, but Derry Alderman still very much in it. Yeah, both these guys are so tough. Here's the start. Check out this start from McDaniel. Goes right out. One, two, boom. Drops him right to a knee. Alderman goes right to his grappling, goes, well, it's probably not a good idea to stand up with this guy. And really, it was the striking versus the grappling skills. Just a beautiful one-two combination. Jab didn't land, but that two did. The second combination did not. Alderman able to change levels. Alderman trying to take the back, but it was McDaniel here taking this back turtle position, landed some good ground and pound. Okay, good, out, good, out. What a first round from both out, men. Out. And he, here's this knee, oh! Landed go back, go back, go back. pretty heavy there. Wow. Jalen McDaniel in that first round, every time he had even a half second to throw something meaningful, he capitalized on it. That Absolutely. is impressive from any fighter. Absolutely. Much less someone making their pro debut. Jalen McDaniel in the black trunks, Derry Alderman in the gray. Round number two begins a little bit more slowly than the first frame. Yeah, Alderman is definitely moving a little bit slower out there. He had to exert a lot of energy trying to get McDaniel to the floor. Uh, we're going to bring in a, a, another special celebrity guest, Bo Nickel, three-time NCAA wrestling champion at Penn State University. And we saw Derry Alderman 
fighting over and over and over for what ultimately were unsuccessful takedown attempts, Bo. How much does that take out of the gas tank? Oh, it takes a ton out of the gas tank. I was definitely impressed with McDaniel's wrestling defense. You know, the striking looked great. And then, you know, for Alderman to be consistent with going for those takedowns and, and to be able to defend all of those was super impressive. I would definitely think that it took a lot of gas out of Alderman. To, uh, out of Thanks to Bo Nickel for weighing in. He knows a thing or two about wrestling at a high level. Yeah. As he's talking about it, you saw McDaniel Olay that double leg attempt just forced the head down, and Alderman, his momentum carried him all the way into the cage. Yeah, absolutely. The, the best kind of defensive wrestling is not letting them touch your legs, and he was able to frame off with his arms and kind of keep that distance, but Alderman able to get in on those legs now and in a much better position. McDaniel has that half butterfly guard. Let's see if he's able to elevate the hips of Alderman and get back to his feet here, but you see the head position there from Alderman. That is what's going to allow him to keep McDaniel on his back for a little bit longer here. I tell you what, Kenny, dogged persistence. Five plus yeah. minutes of takedown attempts, and Derry Alderman finally gets one that keeps McDaniel on the ground for some sizable time here. Let's see what he can do with this. Randy, are you surprised at that dogged, that, that pursuit? Because if you miss two or three or four attempts, you're getting tired the whole way through. Sometimes people abandon ship. Alderman didn't. Absolutely, that's persistence and resilience right there. He took some lumps, he just keeps coming forward. Very impressive counter wrestling and defensive wrestling by, by McDaniel as well. Yeah, and you know, for those that know the story of Alderman, he works 50, 60 hours a week, then goes to train at 10, 11 o'clock at night. So, you know he wants this, you know he's been working hard for this. Both these guys have really battled throughout these rounds. Vitor Belfort, how does Jalen McDaniel get up off of his back here? McDaniel has to understand he cannot go into the wrestling. He's not using his try. He's, he's so more experienced in the striking, you already know, but he has to move his hip looking for the fence and get up and get the middle and don't look for the grappling. He has to stay on the outside. He's having much more advantage, but at the moment right now, he has to look for a sweep and trying to get up. You don't want to be on the ground. This is a very bad position because he's losing the round. McDaniel now able to sit up with a, more, a, a better butterfly guard. This is where he can either elevate the hips of Alderman or look for a get up himself. And he's using his legs to get underneath the hips there where he's taking away the contact of the floor from Alderman. Let's see if he can elevate. Oh, now Alderman able to pass the legs, able to get a side control position. This is Alderman advancing position, much better position for him. McDaniel able to get back to a guard. McDaniel blocks the full mount attempt with his right leg as Alderman tried to step over. Inside of one minute remaining in round number two. And the wrestling of Alderman has been the story here. You know, Sean, I'm really impressed. This is their first professional fight. I didn't have these skills in my first fight, so I'm really blown away. I've seen uh, guys with much more experience be a lot sloppier than these two. This has been a fun technical fight. I feel a little bit attacked by that statement because 32 <laughs> fights into my pro career, I'm not sure I had all the skills oh, that we've seen on, on display here. But in all seriousness, I mean, you've seen counter wrestling, submission yeah. attempts, submission defense, sharp striking, although that was more featured in the first round here. Good ground and pound from Jalen McDaniel in yeah. the first frame. And, and now, and he's a teenager shot. I mean, he's 19. Yeah. Unbelievable. And, and Alderman, only 26 showing a lot of grit and determination here, able to battle back and, in my opinion, win this round. So it's gonna come down to round three. How exciting is that? Round two finishes. A round apiece, according to Kenny Florian. Let's go inside the corner of Jalon McDaniel and hear what Mr. Lima has to say. All right, in the beginning, keep it on your feet now, okay? You don't gotta fall into the ground. You land in something every time, okay? Pop and move, if he's wrestling, go, 
Push away, pa, pa, pa. Keeping your distance though, okay? Hey, it's 1-1. One, one. You need this one, all right? We gotta go. We gotta go, okay? We gotta rest. That's good, man. You're, you're, you're not even tired, dude. You don't even tire. He's tired. He probably feels a tiredness like you, but you're, he's fucking tired. He's sitting down. Do your thing. Wrestle him, okay? He's gonna be lazy. He's throwing lazy punches now, okay? All right, so you heard the advice from both corners there. The corner of Javon McDaniel, echoing what we heard from Vitor Belfort. Don't go to the ground. Don't concede that position. And Gary Alderman, to his credit, does not look too much worse for the wear, despite the exhausting method of his fight plan here with all that wrestling. Yeah, I, I thought that was excellent advice there from Lima, the corner man for McDaniel, telling him to use the distance, keep him on the outside. You don't have to follow him to the ground. Another one to attempt here from Jalen McDaniel. Gary Alderman learned his lesson in the first round, stays out of range. Kenny, for me, this is where a pro debut gets incredibly interesting because it probably is around a piece on the judge's scorecard. Yep. Neither of these guys are particularly experienced in mixed martial arts with three wins apiece. Who's got what it takes to push through in this final five minutes and get a win in the pro debut? Yeah, and to keep the peace of mind, to stick to the game plan, stay disciplined. That is a big part of it as well. A lot of times you have the skills, but you can't execute when you need to. You know, doing to your mind going a million miles an hour. Alderman in on a single now, trying to take it to the ground. Do you hear the advice again from McDaniel's corner? Wrestle first. All right, Todd Gurley coming down to the wire here, potentially. Who's got what it takes in the third round? Oh, reverse triangle. Uh, right now, it look, looked like it's 1-1. I, I, I just love the patience by both of them. Um, Ald oh, wow. Alderman has a lot of grit, resiliency. Um, McDaniels, I like, I just like the calmness of everyone. This is their first fight. And man, it, it's definitely impressive. Like you said, I've, I've, I've seen professionals that's been in it for a while. And, and these guys look like they've been doing it for a, a, a while. So I just love the, the patient calmness that they're showing. Um, good. Jalen McDaniel now finds himself glued to the mat once again. You know, Sean, you, you mentioned the reverse triangle. I thought McDaniel should have stuck with it. That was very tight. It seemed like he let go and tried to disengage, but he might have had Alderman in some serious trouble had he held on to that. Well, that's that's something that you might you might make a decision like that based on what, Kenny, on experience. Right, exactly, exactly. So we're perhaps seeing this pro debut situation on display there. There he goes. McDaniel able to kick Alderman off of him and get back to his feet. Oh, Halfway man. through this third round. <laughs> back and forth they go. Randy, now McDaniel trying to scramble to the back. It looks Sean and Kenny, you guys both owe me a beer for that tandem. He's 19. <laughs> <laughs> this is the progression of MMA we're seeing right here. These guys have a lot more skills, composure than any of us had at this age. This is that third generation of MMA guys that saw us fighting and said, that's what I want to do. And they went about without that background or anything else, becoming well-rounded mixed martial artists. Wow, excellent scramble there by McDaniel. Alderman goes right back down onto the legs. And I couldn't agree more with Randy. I mean, this is the evolution of the sport. This is how good these kids are getting now. They're starting at a much earlier age. They have the experience and knowledge of coaches and other fighters that have been doing it for a long time now. And man, these kids are getting very good. Derry Alderman with another takedown here. Just over a minute to go. Vito. So, uh, I, I guess Matt Daniel is not, he not he's sometimes he's getting too, he, too excited. He has to disengage and, and listen to his corner, go to the strike. Alderman is doing an amazing job. He, he reminds me a lot of Randy, like, you know, he's, he's on you. Like, he doesn't want to stop the, the ground, the, gr the grinding. So he has to get up. He cannot stay down. He's going to lose that round. 
I think Vitor just called Randy annoying. I think that's what. But Alderman just, again, sticking to his game plan. Looks like he may finish on top, which is gonna make it look good for him and the judges. And he just continues to chip away and take McDaniel out of his game plan. Our first fight of the night drawing to a close here. And Kenny, if it's gonna be like this for everyone's pro debut, uh, the, the bar has clearly been raised. Yes, absolutely. A uh, nice get up there by McDaniel. Stop, stop, stop. They will finish there. Wow. Three rounds of professional mixed martial arts action for the very first time in Jalon McDaniel's career, in Derry Alderman's career, and we go to the judges' scorecards. We'll have a winner for you next on Fubo TV. What up, fight fans? I'll be a celebrity panelist with my boys Ray Lewis and Tyron Woodley on Friday 4-8. It's a second chance for fighters to win a contract into the PFL. So let's check out how the winners have been rolling with some knockout action in the PFL Challenger Series. The time is set. The stage is set. Your mentality will dictate your success. Oh. Oh. Nasty leg kick. Oh, there's the knee! Brucey Soto, the PFL <laughs> contract. Great combination. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness! So welcome to PFL. It's a big shot there from Yandrova. This is like a painting uh, Picasso right now. Martina Yandrova gets the contract. Oh, big shot there. Oh, beautiful combination. Your newest professional fighters league featherweight fighter. Oh, oh, right hand! Big combination! That's a right hand! That's gonna be it. Bruno Miranda receives a lightweight contract. With the heavyweights, they have a lot of respect because they know one slip and it could be lethal. Oh, oh big big shot. my goodness! One wow! Punch through the armpit and that's enough! Adam Koresh, the newest member of the BFL heavyweight roster. Now those are my kind of finishes, the ones that never leave a decision to the refs. Now let's get back to Sean and Kenny, and I'll see you Friday night. Take a look at our carparts.com, Cagenomics post-fight stats, Jalon McDaniel and Derry Alderman. Jalon McDaniel outlanded Alderman, but it was the wrestling, those three takedowns, that proved to be the story in the second and third round. Here's our carparts.com damage meter. You can see, Derry Alderman wore a bunch of punches to the head. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score the bout 29 28 for your winner by unanimous decision, Derry Alderman. All right, I'm here with the winner, Derry Alderman. Pro debut, successful, still undefeated. Let's talk about how that fight started, though. The one-two, the two lands, drops you a little bit. You get right to the wrestling. First round wasn't going your way. You stuck it out. You wrestled your way to a victory here. Did it go the way you thought it would? Oh, hell no. I didn't plan on getting dropped that early, but I wanted to take him out. He was way stronger than I thought, but I knew, like, if I just weather it in the first, I can just grind him out in the second and third. I get better after round one, just cardio. Well, the cardio paid off here. Let's see what our celebrity panel thought. Over to you, Julie Stewart-Binks. Thanks, Sean. Well, we heard that Vitor Belfort said that Derry Alderman reminded him of Randy Couture. I got to ask you, Randy, what do you think of that? Well, it was definitely a grinding performance, and that was certainly part of my style. 
great job in using your wrestling, being resilient, recovering from that initial shock, getting put on your butt. Uh, you did a really, really good job. Very impressed with you. Great submission attempts as well. Let's bring in Todd Gurley. What did you like about Derry's pro debut tonight? Well, unlike Sean, he wasn't swinging with his eyes closed on his pro debut. But, you know, the first round wasn't going his way. He was able to bounce back the second round and the third round. Um, just a lot of grit, you know. He, he never gave up. He took up the champ and he was able to move on and, and conquer himself. Vitor, I know you've been very impressed with Derry. What kind of potential do you think he has? I think Elderman and I just want to tell you one thing. You're going to be amazing. You remind a lot of Randy I fought three times. You got like a glue. But when you start understanding and learning that strike and start changing levels and a lot of things, you're going to be a danger fighter, man. You have a lot of heart, a lot of grit. Just get, just make sure you're moving your head, just a lot of things. I think you have a lot of things to do, man. Congrats. Yeah, for sure. Derry Alderman, successful at his pro debut here on the PFL Challenger Series. And from the featherweights, go to the big boys. Rock him tally. And Santino Zurita. 265 pounders take to the cage next on Fubo TV. What up, fight fans? I'll be a celebrity panelist with my boys Ray Lewis and Tyron Woodley on Friday 4-8. It's a second chance for fighters to win a contract into the PFL. So let's check out how the winners have been rolling with some knockout action in the PFL Challenger Series. The time is set. The stage is set. Your mentality will dictate your success. Oh. Oh. Nasty leg kick. Oh, oh there's the knee! Goodness. Brucey Soto, the PFL <laughs> contract. Great combination. Should have pounded me. Brutal knee. Oh, oh my goodness. So welcome to PFL. Some big shots there from Yandrova. This is like a painting uh, Picasso right now. Martina Yandrova gets the contract. Oh, big shot there. Oh, beautiful combination. Your newest professional fighters league featherweight fighter. Oh, oh right hand. big combination. Oh, that's a right hand. That's going to be it. Bruno Miranda receives a lightweight contract. With the heavyweights, they have a lot of respect because they know one slip and it could be lethal. Oh, oh big shot. Oh, my goodness. One wow. Punch through the armpit, and that's enough. Adam Koresh, the newest member of the PFL heavyweight roster. Now those are my kind of finishes, the ones that never leave a decision to the refs. Now let's get back to Sean and Kenny, and I'll see you Friday night. Challenger Series action continues in the heavyweight division. This three five minute round pro bout brought to you by carparts.com. Santino Zarita versus Rakim Tally. JSB, bring the big boys out here. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sean. Our lone heavyweight fight of the night features a Las Vegas kickboxer taking on a former amateur champion. Fighting out of Clarksville, Tennessee with nine amateur wins, making my pro debut, Rakim Talley. Rakim Talley got into wrestling at age 11 because of WWE, but found out it was very different from that. He played football, ran track, including the 300-meter hurdles, which he said taught him patience and attention to detail. Let's meet his opponent. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, making my pro debut, Santino Zurita. Santino Zurita was a sparring partner of UFC heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou and also PFL heavyweight champion Bruno Capeloza. That caught the eye of Ray Cepho and led him to the Challenger Series. And you see, he's here now. 
So Santino Zarita climbs into the cage to make his pro debut opposite Rock Kim Tally. And our tale of the tape is brought to you by CarParts.com. Santino Zarita, only 21 years of age. He's two inches taller. He weighed in 23 pounds heavier. But it is Rock Kim Tally with the reach advantage in the arms. That favors Santino Zarita in the legs. Five pro debuts tonight, five winners, two finalists, and our celebrity panel will choose a contract winner from those two finalists. That winner will appear in the 2022 season on a developmental contract in the PFL. Our referee is Andrew Glenn to oversee the big boys in action. Lauren signals that it's round number one, the first of a possible three. No touch of the gloves. Tally in the valet. Tudos with the oh. high kick. Nice jab to respond from Santino Zarita. Looks like it was a little poke there, Sean. Just as we yep, get yeah. started, another pause. Sorry. Yep. Big kick to start from Rakim, but then as he went to frame to keep. Zarita away from him. That finger went into the eye. It looks like he's okay now, finger. thankfully. Right, here we go. Time in. Fight. Inside leg kick there. Now the clinch grab from Rakim Tally. And they're cracking away now. Tally looking to land those knees in the clinch. Yeah, both men not wasting any time. Tally, who comes from a wrestling background, he says, I'm not a boring fighter. And uh, he is proving that right now. Going for it. Zarita, though, with a, a kickboxing and Muay Thai background, not unfamiliar with these clinch situations himself. He's only 21 years of age. And as you heard Julie Stewart Binks talking about in the introduction, he's been sparring with UFC heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou, PFL heavyweight champion Bruno Capelosa, accounting well for himself against guys like that. Makes me very curious about what he can do in here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to be that age and be around that kind of greatness is only going to help him, no doubt about that. High underhook here as Rakim Tally presses Santino Zarita against the cage. Yeah, Tally trying to work a takedown now. Zarita doing a good job of getting his head underneath the chin of Zarita, of Tally, sorry. There he creates the oh. right arm. Jumping knee and a left hook from Rakim Tally. And right back into the pressure. Uh, Tally really is that double threat. When he's not getting the takedown, he's mixing things up beautifully with the striking. Randy, you ever seen heavyweights fighting like this against the cage? <laughs> never, never in my <laughs> life. Actually, I like the clinch work. Both guys, uh, interesting style matchup, the wrestling clinch versus the Muay Thai clinch. And both guys landed some significant shots, showing some good chins. Uh, it's a very, very solid matchup. It's a great fight. Yes, uh, oh, wow. So Zurita, it's very tough for Duro. You can see he has experience training with high, high level guys. But Tali showed me a lot of like variety of movements. And so I'm seeing, uh, I can see a knockout will happen very soon. Todd Gurley, you anticipate a knockout happening in this one? Two heavyweights swinging away. Man, very, very impressive from the start. You know, two big guys going at it, um, getting things on and popping. And I just love the energy right now. Tally once again pressuring Santino Sarita against the cage here. Two minutes remain in the first round. Kenny, we saw one at distance. Sarita landed a couple of nice combinations. Rakim Tally thought better of maybe standing out there in the kickboxing specialist world. Yeah, absolutely. And he can mix things up as well, but I do think he's going to have the big advantage when it comes to grappling if he can take it to the mat anyway. But so far, Zarita 
doing a great job of getting head control. You see he's placing that head underneath the head of Tally, which is not allowing Tally to change levels and get in on those legs. So Zarita really showing experience well beyond his actual experience level of zero professional fights. Pretty impressive. Kenny, you mentioned pro debut for Zarita, of course, pro debut for everybody on the card tonight. Zarita, though, he has one amateur fight that he won via split decision. Rakim Tally, he's nine fight. This is his 10th fight. Now, it's not a pro career. But right. This is his 10th mixed martial arts fight with a more extensive amateur career. Yeah, and that definitely makes a difference as well. He's mixing it up very, very well so far. Not just a wrestler. Excuse me, his 12th fight. He's nine and two as an amateur. Zarita doing a good job of getting underhooks. Tally trying to get that knee from the tie clinch, and Zarita starting to pour it on here with combinations. The right hand is snuck through a couple times for Zarita in this first round. Good jab from Tally to back him up. Inside leg kick, and another clinch and knee from Rakim Tally. That'll be it for round number one, back and forth affair in the early goings here. Kenny Florian, impressive display of skill. Absolutely, and a tough 15, round to 15, score 15, as well. 15, Rico Both men had 15. their moments. Great start there for Tally. Excellent finish for Zarita. We'll take a look at a couple of replays you know here. Now, listen to me. Tally with some Nice quickness there, excellent kick. Went to frame on the head of Zarita and got a little eye, eye poke there. But how about this combination there from Zarita? Throwing about 10 strikes in a row there. Beautiful Dutch style combination there. Showed some good counter wrestling. Good, the jab is there. there. Use it when he comes to you. ready to spoil them out. Thank you. We get ready for round number two of heavyweight action here on the PFL Challenger Series. Pro debut for both Santino Zarita in the black trunks and Rakim Tally right. in the Great Valley Tudos. They take to the center of the cage. A jab to start things from Santino. forth with these combinations and once again Tally's able to wade in and this time oh. secure a takedown but Santino tries to reverse position get on his back and instead of settle in against the cage here yeah Zarita almost got that top position but Tally able to recover now both men back to their feet Tally trying to drag Zarita to the floor here now in a much better position let's see if he could wrap his hands around the waist of Zarita Well, we've got uh, our regular three-person celebrity panel, Kenny Florian, and a bonus tonight, three-time NCAA wrestling champion Bo Nickel watching and joining us remotely. And you know a lot about wrestling and this grinding style of work, Bo Nickel, but the cage changes the dynamics somewhat. What do you think of their work against the barrier? Oh, it definitely makes a huge difference. You know, I think that uh, being able to hold your opponent up against the cage, being able to put your weight on him, that's, you know, really uh, tough for, for people to defend. And I, I, I like the action from, from Tally a lot, going for that uh, over-under throw. Um, I think he needs to get into a little bit more of that. You know, the over-under looks good. And, uh, you know, hopefully he can go for a few more takedowns and bring down the mat. And that's where he has the advantage. Hurt, hurt, hurt. Big thanks to Bo Nickel for joining the broadcast. Once again, 
Tally pushes Zarita against the barrier. And Kenny, I, I, I'm curious what you think of Zarita's uh, forward motion on his combinations because when he stays at distance, it seems like he's able to land and then he ends up chest to chest. It's often his own momentum that carries him into these clinches. Yeah, that's right. I think he's helping Tally in that regard. Tally now landing some combinations. But I agree, I think she got to hold his ground and, and try to keep Tally away with long range weapons as opposed to kind of blitzing him, which is gonna allow for those reactive takedowns or reactive style clinches that Tally is getting here against Rita. Tally continues to throw knees up the middle. Round two halfway gone as Zarita sneaks an overhand right around the guard of Rakim Tally. We're definitely seeing Tally slow down now, though. Zarita still seems like he's moving well. Nice combination there from Zarita, but again, he puts himself inside of the reaching range of Tally and allows himself to be hugged out of offensive prowess. Yeah, it's almost like he's initiating that clinch, which is helping Tally here because Zarita really tagging him from the outside. Vitor, help me out here. Is Zarita jamming himself up by moving forward the way that he is? Zarita has to understand he's not using the uppercuts. He's having success, and also his straight hands. You can see his elbow is too open. He has to he has to close his punch a little more when he goes straight, but follow up with the uppercut. He's not using. He's throwing hooks, wire hooks, and his straight punches. His elbows a little wide, but if he use the uppercut, it's gonna get him up. He's now, gotta believe it. Hold on. In week five. Vitor Belfort called for uppercuts, and then it was an uppercut that ended the fight like 30 seconds later. I, we'll see if that happens again here. Only one minute remaining in round number two. Randy Couture, this is a tried and true style, but it's taxing. Is fatigue going to be a factor if we see the third round? Tally slow down just a little bit. He's taking a little bit off the punching. He's not quite as energetic as he was in that first round for sure. I do believe, like you said, Sean, that Zarita is falling into the, uh, following those combinations and falling into that clinch where he'd be better off staying out at distance and continuing to rain down those combinations. Kenny, as we see guys making their pro debut, I, I feel like that's another thing that comes with experience. I mean, even yeah. deeper into your career, uh, that, that clinch and kind of belly to belly, it's a safer spot when you're talking about uh, knockout power and damage that you can actually sustain. So oftentimes you, you might subconsciously be diving into that kind of stuff as round two comes to a close. I remember my own big show UFC debut, I, the same exact thing happened. Yeah. I, I followed myself, followed a combination in too close, ended up in a clinch against the cage. 100%, you know, a footwork is, is probably the most underestimated aspect of striking. Um, and uh, I think that he's throwing himself off balance a little bit with his punches. Here's Tally looking for that takedown, but almost screwed it up. Zarita almost got on top. They were able to scramble to their feet. Nice exchanges there in the clinch. Tally landing some shots, Zarita landing some shots. The knee that just missed. Some nice knees up the middle there from Tally. And Zarita landing some nice combinations. This is where he starts coming way too far forward, Sean, as you were talking about. Last round, last round. Well, there'll be no doubting last the round, chin move. on either Good. of these individuals after this fight. In their pro debut, each man has eaten some big time punches. Lauren shows us it is round you ready? You ready? number three. The final frame. This PFL Challenger Series action is all about earning a contract. Five winners on the card tonight will be narrowed down to two finalists. Our celebrity panel will choose which of those two finalists gets a PFL contract. Oh. Big knees from Santino this time. Yeah, Z Zarita just kind of watched his work a little bit. He should have landed those combinations and kind of dip out a little bit, change his angle. Allows Tally to get to a clinch and thwart that combination attempt from Zarita. 
Stewie Cooper in the corner of Zarita calling for him to get the underhooks and then turn out. Pummeling and fighting for position here, Kenny, only matters if you're able to get yourself off the cage. Yeah, that's right, and, and probably the most grueling aspect of mixed martial arts as well. Tally trying to get a crotch lift, he gets it. Ends up in the half guard here. See if Tally can do something with four minutes remaining. And this was a huge moment here for Tally. Getting the takedown, putting Zarita on his back, and now gets to mount. He's won fights here before via submission and via TKO. Like you said, the wrestling background of Tally could be his major advantage here. And Santino Zarita's got to figure out a way how to get himself out of mount. Yeah, I mean, this is why he was looking for that takedown so hard and now trying to get a choke here. It's still on the chin, so I don't think Zarita is in any, is in any trouble at this point. Zarita has an underhook. Let's see if he's able to elevate and get back to his feet. Camera fist from the top for Tally. Tally with some excellent ground and pound. Zarita needs to get that shoulder underneath the armpit of Tally so he can get back to his feet. Back to the bout goes Rakim Tally. Santino Zarita has half a round now to get out. Nice right hands from the top. Landing on the ear, going around the guard. Watch Vegas. Zarita tried to bridge out there, which allowed Rakim Tally to get his own leg under the hips. Yeah, he's just turning towards the knee of Tally. He's not pushing on the knee. He's not trying to really shrimp out. He's just bucking with his hips, and that's not going to be enough to get Tally off. Tally looks like he's maybe trying to set up an Americana here, but I'm not sure that he's got the angle with them so close to the cage. So let's it go. Make him fight. Arm triangle. Right there. Right there. Get your head down to the mat. All right, Randy, we've only got 90 seconds to go in this heavyweight affair. Your overall impression of this fight? Uh, pretty even matchup. Great job by Zarita using his combinations. He's got some skills he needs to work on. Nice job with Rakim Tally staying tenacious, finally getting that takedown and winning this third round with that takedown. Tally was very impressed, the, the grind. He was looking for the take now. Now he has the third round for sure. But you know, the thing with Zurita, when he's understand the potential he has and start sharpening his tools, and even on the ground, you see he's not moving, he's not swooping and pushing the hip, he's not pushing the knee. He has to go to the side and push the knee and just trying to go up. So we see. Control, control. And Todd, obviously we like to see knockouts from the heavyweights, but you gotta be able to grind it out too. Some good combinations by Zarita. Um, looked like the T's playing a, a factor in this third round. Um, obviously, Tally being a former wrestler, I think this is this is helping him out to his advantage right now. So, pretty much even matching my eyes, but uh, you know, I, I, I definitely definitely like the big fellas going after it though. But but the team look like it's a factor right now. Tally still on top, trying to make something happen. Isolate an arm, grab the neck. Only 10 seconds remain. Yeah, this has been a dominant round for Tally. He's going to finish on top. And he continues to land shots in this top position. Zarita gets back to his feet. But too little, too late. Santino Zarita and Rakim Tally. Heavyweight action, we will go to the judges' scorecard in this one. Strong round in the third frame there from Rakim Tally. We'll have a winner after the judges decide who that is next on Fubo TV. What up, fight fans? 
I'll be a celebrity panelist with my boys Ray Lewis and Tyron Woodley on Friday 4-8. It's a second chance for fighters to win a contract into the PFL. So let's check out how the winners have been rolling with some knockout action in the PFL Challenger Series. The time is set. The stage is set. Your mentality will dictate your success. Oh. Oh. Nasty leg kick. Oh, there's the knee! Goodness. Brucey Soto, the PFL <laughs> contract. Great combination. Oh, oh my goodness! goodness. So welcome to PFL. It's like it, it, like a big like shot it. there from Yandrova. This is like a painting of uh, Picasso right now. Martina Yandrova gets the contract. Oh, big shot there. Oh, beautiful combination. Your newest professional fighters league featherweight fighter. Oh, oh, right hand! Big combination! Oh, there's a right hand! That's gonna be it. Bruno Miranda receives a lightweight contract. With the heavyweights, they have a lot of respect because they know one slip and it could be lethal. Oh, oh big oh, shot! Oh, my goodness! One wow! Punch through the armpit, and that's enough! Adam Koresh, the newest member of the BFL heavyweight roster. Now those are my kind of finishes, the ones that never leave a decision to the refs. Now let's get back to Sean and Kenny, and I'll see you Friday night. Welcome back to PFL Challenger Series action. We take a look at our carparts.com Cajunomics post-fight stats for our lone heavyweight bout on the card tonight. Rakim Talley out through, out landed, out wrestled. Santino Zarita in this one as we go to the judges' scorecards. There's some nice combinations there from Zarita. Some great exchanges from both men in the clinch. Oh, beautiful left hook there from Tally as he level changes, looking for that takedown. And this is the difference here, right on that single, gets that crotch lift, gets on top, and really never allowed Zarita back in the fight in that third round. Excellent grounded pound from the mount. And let's throw it to Sean O'Connell, who's in the cage with the official decision. Sean. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score the bout 30-27. For your winner, by unanimous decision, Rock him, Tally. <laughs> so Rock him, Tally improves to one and zero as a pro. All right, coming up next. More Challenger Series action. That man right there, Joe Ham, makes his pro debut. He'll take on Alexei Pergante with his dad in the corner. What up, fight fans? I'll be a celebrity panelist with my boys Ray Lewis and Tyron Woodley on Friday 4-8. It's a second chance for fighters to win a contract into the PFL. So let's check out how the winners have been rolling with some knockout action in the PFL Challenger Series. The time is set. The stage is set. Your mentality will dictate your success. Oh. Oh. Nasty leg kick. Oh, there's the knee! Goodness. Brucey Soto, the PFL <laughs> contract. Great combination. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness! Welcome to PFL. It's a big shot there from Yandrova. This is like a painting of uh, Picasso right now. Martina Yandrova gets the contract. Oh, big shot there. Oh, oh beautiful combination. Your newest professional fighters league featherweight fighter. Oh, right hand! Big combination! 
there's a right hand. That's going to be it. Bruno Miranda receives a lightweight contract. With the heavyweights, they have a lot of respect because they know one slip and it could be lethal. Oh, oh, oh shot. my goodness, one wow. punch through the armpit, and that's oh, enough. Adam Koresh, the newest member of the BFL heavyweight roster. Now, those are my kind of finishes, the ones that never leave a decision to the refs. Now, let's get back to Sean and Kenny, and I'll see you Friday night. Sean O'Connell, Kenny Florian, our celebrity panel back for more Challenger Series action. We continue in the lightweight division. This fight brought to you by Next Level Hydrogen Water, Alexei Pergande and Joe Ham on the pro debut night. Julie Stewart Binks, bring them out. Time now to meet our next round of fighters, lightweight fighters making their pro debut. Fighting out of Marietta, Georgia, with six amateur wins. I'm making my pro debut, Joe Ham. Joe Ham told us he's only had one coach, Manu Ento, a six time Muay Thai champion who he trusts with his life. He said he hears his voice in his head, and there's never a question in technique or approach. Fighting out of Nashville, Tennessee, former ringside boxing world champion, making my professional debut, Alexei Pergande. Alexei Pergande told us that his father is his inspiration. He was his boxing coach growing up. They drive eight to 10 hours to wrestling and boxing tournaments. His father will be in his corner tonight and his advice was don't be a deer in headlights. Good advice from dad for a pro debut there. And we'll take a look at our tail of the tape, brought to you by Next Level Hydrogen Water. Alexei Pergande is 20 years of age. He is two inches taller, weighed in a pound lighter than Joe Ham. He has a one inch reach advantage on the arms, two on the leg. Pro debut night, but we're giving a contract away. All five winners on the card are eligible for a contract. PFL will select two finalists from those five winners. Our celebrity panel will decide which of those two finalists receives a PFL contract and the winner appears in the 2022 season. Marcos Perez is our referee. Lauren lets us know we're set for round number one. Are you ready? Ready? Fight! Joe Ham in the gray trunks. Alexei Pergande in the black ballet tutos. Inside leg kick from Ham. Another in sharp inside leg kick there from Joe Ham. Yeah, and watch for that left kick from Joe Ham. Always interesting when you get opposite stance fighters. Joe Ham in that southpaw stance. We'll look to try to use that left kick repeatedly. Let's say Pergone had it. Ooh, just missed with a high kick there. He had 88 amateur go, boxing right fights. Down, Former go, ringside right world down. champion. But of his four amateur mixed martial arts wins, Kenny Florian, all of them finishes. Three of those were submissions from the boxer. Yeah, it's really impressive. Amazing amount of experience at only 20 years old. Still does, doesn't have his man strength. Joe Ham, 31 years old, getting into his physical prime. I'm still looking for my man strength. I'm 45, Sean. What's <laughs> yeah. going on? I think that ship has sailed, Kenny Florian. I hate to say it. All I have left is old man strength. That's what I have to look forward to. But both men exchanging in the clinch here. Nice, nice move there from Alexi to try to move to the back of Joe Ham. Gets the takedown. Ham striking from the bottom there with his left butterfly in. Yeah, he's staying active. Alexei trying to get the inside position with his arms and now starting to posture up so he can land some ground and pound. He does. Nice pass and then the hammer fist coming down from the top. Yeah, he, he might be setting up an arm triangle here if he's able to get that knee across. He does. Now he needs to get to the opposite side of Joe Ham's body. Belly, belly, belly. 
Randy, how do you prepare for a guy with an extensive boxing background but submission success in his amateur MMA career? Well, I think Ham was doing the right thing out of the gate, which is throw those kicks, especially with his Muay Thai coach and his Muay Thai background. Stay out of kicking range and don't get into that range of exchanges for the hands. That might have eliminated this takedown attempt, too, by Perganda. He's got a well-rounded game, for sure. Yes, Perganda showed me that he was a reverse when, when I started my career. He, I was a jiu-jitsu, but I became a boxer. So he, he surprised his opponent. He has a very good high-level ground, but as in the right now in that position, he has to jump to the other side yep. and go to the choke. He has to jump to the other side, opposite side, and he's not doing that. So he's resitating just a little bit, and that will, can cost the position. Enjoying the pace right now. Um, these, these, these lightweights are, you know, getting after it. I like Pergande, um, his experience. Um, a lot of experience for his pro debut, so I'm um, looking forward to these next two rounds. Ooh, some nice Ooh. ground and pound there from Pergande. Johan doing a good job defending himself on his back, though. He's staying disciplined, getting his legs in the game, and staying active from bottom with strikes as well. Yeah, it's always an interesting balance when you're striking from the bottom because like you don't want to waste a lot of effort on things that, that aren't going to pay dividends in the end. But what right. he has landed from the bottom have not been insignificant by any stretch. Yeah, 100%. Still can create some power off of his back. Just keeps the guy on top honest. But now Pergande working on that Dars choke from top position. This could be trouble for, for Joe Hamm. Pergande has got his hands locked. Oh, this looks very tight. Tight squeeze here from Alexei Pergande. Oh, Joe, Joe Ham. Ham. Squeezes the head out. Yeah, that was nice, slick movement there from Joe Ham, able to stay composed, but he was in a tough position there. Pergande not quite able to get his weight involved into that choke. <laughs> 20-year-old Alexei Pergande on top of Joe Ham. Yeah, and Pergande has that gift wrap. He's got that wrist trap from Joe Ham. Let's see if he starts to free that left arm. He can unload here. Not a whole lot, of not a whole lot of time to do it though. As we get to the end of round one. Great job by Joe Ham, realizing that that gift wrap means that Pergande's only got one offensive weapon, and he grabs a hold of it. Yeah, nice defensive skills there from Ham from bottom again. Stop. Round one comes to a close stop, stop, with Alexei Pergande on top of Joe Ham. So we saw a little bit of everything from the former amateur boxing world champion. Two submission attempts, a good takedown. Zitz is looking good. Just watch those punches when he's on the ground. Go ahead and pass and say high step. The knees, his legs are open. Just bring it out. Just watch those knees. There's that little inside trip from Pergande, able to get on top. Joe Ham showing some good defensive skills on bottom. Some nice grounded pound there from Pergande. Let's try to set up an arm trying at one point. And here's Pergande attacking the body, going to the head as well, mixing things up. Got to think. Pergande won that that first round. We'll see what adjustments Joe Ham and his coaches made. Right. As we start round right. number two, Fight. Joe Ham in the gray trunks, Alexei Pergande in the black valet Tudo shorts. Open stances once again, Joe Ham, the southpaw. Now Joe kind of backing up against the cage, maybe using the cage to help keep him up, but that's going to allow Pergande to close the distance a little bit easier. It's been all kicks from Pergande in the early part of this round. And now, oh, oh. big Joe shots Hamm there from him. Catches the straight right, right down the middle as Pergande tried a flying knee. Punches the airborne opponent, Joe Ham. Laser like accuracy on that right hand. Yeah, Ham finding some success when he's able to back Pergande up. 
Push kick from Pregande, backs up Ham. Ham switching stances here. Body lock, oh. Ham able to muscle Pregande down to the ground. Landing right in side control, and Pergande throws the legs up over, try and create a scramble and get out. Yeah, that was a beautiful takedown. Pergande now in that turtle position, trying to work his way to his feet. But Ham can potentially attack the back here if he's able to get those hooks in. Oh. Nice reversal there from Pergande. All right, three-time NCAA wrestling champion Bo Nickel is a, a bonus celebrity panelist this week. Uh, some good wrestling and then counter-wrestling there on the switch from Pergande. Bo, what'd you think? Yeah, you know, definitely really impressed with uh, Pergande's game. He seems really well-rounded, comfortable in the stand-up and, you know, mixing in the takedowns, ground and pound, submission attempts. So I'm liking what I'm seeing a lot from him. Um, you know, Joe Ham as well, you know, got that body lock takedown. So these are definitely some, uh, you know, Guys making their debut, but you can tell they uh, have a lot of uh, skills and experience, and experience on the amateur scene. That's a great point by Bo Nickel. Look, <laughs> a guy with 88 boxing wins, and he's 4-0 he's and oh with four finishes, three submissions as an amateur mixed martial artist. He's 20 years old, and he's already got that level of combat sports experience. It's a different world than the one we came up in, Kenny. Yeah, absolutely. And Bo Nickel himself, imagine having to fight him in your pro debut. <laughs> That's no fun. But yeah, these guys are just getting so much experience. Beautiful roll there and leg attack there from Pergande. Beautiful reversal there. Looked like he was gonna roll into a leg attack, just decides to take top position, but that was beautiful. That was wishful thinking by you, Kenny Flory. You always <laughs> want people going for the submissions. I want more, Some, Sean. Sometimes people just want to be on top and smash. <laughs> Uh-oh, going for that darts choke again. Thinks better of it, let's go. And Joe Ham pressuring Alexei Pergande, trying to set up a toss. Pergande runs him right over and ends up in mount. Shoulder punch from Alexei Pergande on the top. Randy, what do you like about Alexei Pergande's wrestling here? Wow, he, I mean, he's just showing a very, very varied and, and wide game of a lot of skills that looked like he was rolling towards knee bar. I got excited just like you did, Kenny. Yeah. He has a knee bar finished in one of his amateur fights, so he's got a lot of skills for a guy with that many boxing matches. Pretty amazing. And a nice body lock takedown, takedown by Joe Hamm. One thing I see on these fights over here is they need the killer stink. And I think when they have it, they just negotiate it to just win the round and win the position. I think I need to say Pergani has that, and he just has to release that. The knee bar, he had some position that he could have finished, but I think he like they want to hold the position like is the last position. They have to go for the killing thing. As right now, Pergani is in the back, he has to finish. That's when the man Carson Gracie told me, when you get the back, when you mount, that's when you finish your opponent. So uh, you see they're going back to the oh. position. Shoulder choke set up as Ham tries to roll out, and, and that's what happens sometimes, Kenny, when a guy gets on your back and you're looking for escape clauses, you end up in a worse position. Tight squeeze from Pergande. Yeah, this was looking tight. Our tried to the tap. He gets it. Alexei Pergande, the amateur boxing champion, remains wow. undefeated and once again wins via submission. And a backflip celebration. And Vitor's got that golden touch, you know, he says something and then shortly after he gets the finish, whatever he wants, he's like, he's playing a video game. Alexei Pergande putting his full range of skills on display. Secures a finish. Elicits the tap. We'll talk to the winner when we return on Fubo TV. What up, fight fans? I'll be a celebrity panelist with my boys Ray Lewis and Tyron Woodley on Friday 4-8. It's a second chance for fighters to win a contract into the PFL. So let's check out how the winners have been rolling with some knockout action. 
in the PFL Challenger Series. The time is set. The stage is set. Your mentality will dictate your success. Oh. Oh. Nasty leg kick. Oh, oh there's the knee! Oh, oh, my, oh goodness. my goodness! Brucey Soto, the PFL <laughs> contract. Great combination. She battered the brutal knee! Oh my goodness! So welcome to PFL. It's a big shot there from Yandrova. He's like a painting uh, Picasso right now. Martina Yandrova gets the contract. Oh, big shot there. Oh, beautiful combination. Your newest professional fighters league featherweight fighter. Oh, oh right hand! Big combination. That's, oh, right hand. That's gonna be it. Bruno Miranda receives a lightweight contract. With the heavyweights, they have a lot of respect because they know one slip and it could be lethal. Oh, oh big oh, shot. Oh my goodness, one wow. punch through the armpit and that's oh, enough. Adam Koresh the newest member of the BFL heavyweight roster. Now those are my kind of finishes, the ones that never leave a decision to the refs. Now let's get back to Sean and Kenny, and I'll see you Friday night. Carparks.com, Cajunomics post-fight stats look like this. Alexei Pergande with three takedowns. Well, this was a, an excellent affair. Both men had their moments. Joe Ham trying to take the back there. Pergande able to get top position, able to escape out of that turtle position. There was a beautiful roll. Looked like he was going to attack the leg there. Decided to just get top position. But this arm triangle, too tough. Joe Ham able to fight him, fight out of some very tough positions. Wasn't able to fight out of that one, though. Beautiful arm triangle there from Alexei Pergande. And he's excited. Backflip. Sean can't do a backflip, but he has the official announcement. Sean. You don't know that I can't do a backflip, Kenny Florian, <laughs> but I'm not going to try. <laughs> I'm here inside the cage with your winner by arm triangle choke. Four minutes and 42 seconds into round number two. Alexei Pergande. All right, I'm here with the winner, Alexei Pergande. Tell me how this happens. A guy who's only 20 years old with an extensive boxing background, now 1-0 as a pro, 5-0 as a mixed martial artist, and four of those wins coming by submission. When did you have time to develop those submission skills? Man, uh, my jiu-jitsu coach, BT, man, he's been uh, teaching me all the tricks. Uh, I couldn't show off my striking like I did my last fight. That's props to my pops. Uh, he's been there for me during the striking, but I I really couldn't like let my hands go. I guess tonight I uh, that was kind of the game plan going to. I wasn't really planning on grappling him unless things went down south. And I uh, I usually can let my hands go. I guess the cut wasn't way too great uh, going into this fight, but uh, you know my Andrew's oldest to come here. I'm, I'm young. I got a. Uh, a lot of uh, fights ahead of me, so I just, you know, just secure the win, not do anything risky. Um, I just felt like I could, uh, those, you know, head and arm chokes, almost Von Flute him. Um, so, you know, I was, I was feeling like he was struggling with those, so I just kind of stuck to that and uh, did it because, I don't know, he's, he was kind of awkward on the feet. Um, and it was hard for me to pick him apart, but I got the job done. That's, that's all that matters. Well, exactly. You got the job done. A finish is a finish. A win is a win. You're 1 0 as a pro. Let's see what our celebrity panel thought of your performance. Julie Stewart-Binks, over to you. Well, after the fight, Prakande just came over and said sorry to the judges that it wasn't more exciting. But Randy, I got to ask you, how would you rate Prakande's pro debut? Well, I was very impressed. The fact that a guy that had his debut even knows what a Von Flew is is impressive to me. Uh, a variety of skills on display. Did a great job tonight. You've got a bright future, my friend. And Sean of all times, they got an ambulance on, on ready to go here. Try the backflip, buddy. I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> we don't have time for that cleanup right now. But Todd Gurley, got to ask you, what did you think of Alexei's composure in the cage? 
Oh, very skilled, very experienced, and I don't know if I'm more impressed with, with the fight or the backflip after him not even being tired. So he showed a lot of endurance and, you know, just a lot of grit. So he, he did a great job. Vitor, this is Alexei's pro debut. What stands out about it? We're going to get, listen to me, you have so much to give, you have so much skills. Make sure you trust your skills and go for the kill. You had so many times, trust your hands and trust your jiu-jitsu and trust your transition. Congratulations for you and your team. Great advice, Sean, back to you. All right, thanks to our celebrity panel. Want to know as a pro, Alexei Pergande. And up next, Cheyenne Serrano, representing Cuba tonight. His opponent getting ready for him. Turner is ready to impress. What up, fight fans? I'll be a celebrity panelist with my boys Ray Lewis and Tyron Woodley on Friday 4-8. It's a second chance for fighters to win a contract into the PFL. So let's check out how the winners have been rolling with some knockout action in the PFL Challenger Series. The time is set. The stage is set. Your mentality will dictate your success. Oh. Oh. Nasty leg kick. Oh, oh there's the knee! Brucey Soto, the PFL <laughs> contract. Great combination. Should have pounded me. Oh, my goodness. Welcome to PFL. It's a big shot there from Yandrova. This is like a painting uh, Picasso right now. Martina Yandrova gets the contract. Oh, big shot there. Oh, beautiful combination. Your newest professional fighters league featherweight fighter. Oh, oh, right hand! Big combination! Oh, that's a right hand! That's gonna be it. Bruno Miranda receives a lightweight contract. With the heavyweights, they have a lot of respect because they know one slip and it could be lethal. Oh, oh big that, shot! Oh my goodness, one punch! Wow! Punched, through the armpit and that's enough! Adam Koresh, the newest member of the BFL heavyweight roster. Now those are my kind of finishes, the ones that never leave a decision to the refs. Now let's get back to Sean and Kenny, and I'll see you Friday night. Challenger, Challenger Series action continues on Fubo TV. We continue with the lightweight division, three five minute rounds brought to you by Columbia Care, Christian Turner and Cheyenne Serrano. Julie Stewart Binks brings them out. Our next bout of the night features USA versus Cuba in this lightweight matchup. Fighting out of Havana, Cuba, representing Hialeah, former double belt holder as an amateur, making my pro debut, Cheyenne Serrano. Cheyenne Serrano moved from Cuba to the U.S. when he was four. He's got the flag there, played basketball and football growing up, but didn't like that you had to depend on a teammate to win, saying, I only want to depend on myself. Fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia, former amateur Georgia lightweight champion, making my pro debut, Christian the Titan Turner. Christian Turner told us he got into MMA thanks to a resource officer at his school who was also a strength and conditioning coach. That helped him find a purpose. He's 4-0 as an amateur with three knockouts. With that, we'll take a look at our Columbia Care tale of the tape. Christian Turner is 20. His opponent is only 22 years old. Turner two inches taller has a six inch reach advantage on the arms. And the reverse is true on the legs for Cheyenne Serrano. Pro debuts tonight, five fights, five winners, narrowed down to two finalists by the league. The celebrity panel then selects a contract winner. That winner appears 
in the PFL 2022 as a developmental prospect. Lauren says it's round number one. Andrew Glenn says we're ready to go. You ready? You ready? Christian Turner in the trunks. Inside leg kicks from both Cheyenne Serrano in the ballet tutum. Well, this should be a fun one. This was one of my picks for fight of the night. Turner looking for a takedown earlier, early here against Serrano. Temporarily able to get Serrano to the ground. Serrano right back to his feet. Up and not quite down. Serrano able to maintain balance. Yeah, got the lift, wasn't able to finish though. Serrano immediately attacks the legs, lands a nice combination with his hands. Nice move off the center line there for Serrano. Turner comes forward and initiates another clinch. They exchange knees to the body. Serrano doing a good job of using some defensive wrestling to create space. Likes to put together some nice combinations. Beautiful spinning back kick there to the body. Left hand touch Turner as well. Cheyenne Serrano. Oh, head kick. Tell you what, I'm not sure Serrano has missed a shot. Been very accurate so far. Very precise with everything he does. There we go, nice combination there for Turner. Blitzing attack from Turner, pays dividends with that hook. An exchange of leg kicks here, Randy Couture, hot start in this affair. Absolutely, great balance showed by Cheyenne Serrano and not giving up that takedown, he was way up in the air. Great combinations, both guys got great skills, very, very good matchup. Vitor, can they keep oh. up this pace? Wheel kick from Cheyenne Serrano. Nice chain work there. Serrano continues the forward pressure, knee taps and gets Turner down, but Turner right back to his feet. Serrano is doing very well. He's very using his uppercuts. He's using his techniques. He's understanding the pace of the fight. He's putting the rhythm. And I think Serrano is, 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 is optimized the positions of the fight. So he's frustrating right now, Turner. Yeah, he really is. Yeah, sorry, Sean. He, he really is firing on all cylinders with his wrestling, with his striking, his kicking game, his boxing combinations really on point everywhere. Kenny, they have been all over this cage, traveling back and forth, running barrier to barrier, side to side, scrambling like this, constant motion with 90 seconds remaining in the first round. Yeah, I mean, the lightweights tend to bring it. They are bringing it tonight for sure. Turner looking for that takedown again. He has been outgunned so far on the feet. Let's see if Turner can put Serrano on his back. Looks like Turner might be hurt to the body there, Sean. Yeah, grimace on the face of Christian Turner. Sharp knees from Serrano. And look at the push, just walking Turner all around the cage. And, and again, I'm just so impressed. Christian Turner, only 20 years old. Cheyenne Serrano, 22 years old. The level that we've seen tonight from these young men, very, very impressive. I suppose we should have expected it on a night full of pro debuts, but the <laughs> yeah. combined age of these two fighters is still south of where some of us are sitting. Yeah. 
Low blow here, pauses the action. Turner will try and bounce it out. You good? Sure. Watch the punch, watch the punch low. A punch low, not as common as a knee going errant. Yeah, it looks like he threw that punch as Turner was throwing a knee and miscalculated there. Turner's okay now. Look at how he mixes it up. Just a beautiful level change here. An excellent counter there by Turner. Nice defensive wrestling by Turner. A little moral victory at the very least there for Christian Turner, stopping what was an excellent entry on that double leg. Yeah, for sure. And he's setting it up with his feints. He's setting it up with his striking. Beautiful stuff. We'll take a look at some replays from round number one as the fighters get advice from their corners. So nice inside kick there from Serrano. A couple of hooks from Serrano from the outside. How about that spinning back kick to the body of Turner? And he's done a good job of really mixing up all the different levels of his strikes. A wheel kick to the temple of Turner. And here's that beautiful outside trip there. Getting the takedown, almost moved into side control there. Just everything he's doing, precise, smooth, yeah. technical. Yeah. What a first round there for Serrano. The break is over, round two ahead here. Lightweights inside the cage, Christian Turner and Cheyenne Serrano, both making their pro debut here in week seven of Challenger Series action. With a contract, become a millionaire. That's the dream. Can you impress the celebrity panel and Ray Seffo enough to be invited to the season? It's not outside the realm of possibility. Nice push kick from Turner. Yeah, excellent job, and that's what he's got to do, stop. being the longer step man. Back, step back. He's got to use those long range weapons. Now put it in, here we go, here Six we go. foot tall, getting those legs Fight. involved, I think will suit him well here against Serrano. Tell you what, that was a dangerous uh, request from Turner to the referee. He lost his mouthpiece while they were still in striking range. Right. Yeah, got to protect yourself at all times. Can't really ask for timeouts in MMA, unfortunately. Oh, nice right hand. Absolutely, Sean. And these are the long range weapons that Turner needs to land. And now Serrano comes forward with a combination and ducks under. Once again, strong counter wrestling from Turner. And he jumps onto a guillotine. Oh, wow. What, what a comeback this would be. It looks like Serrano's in a much better position, though. Able to fight off that, that wrist and saves himself. But Turner really kicking it up a notch here in round two. I'll tell you what, he stymied the takedown attempt first and then jumped on the neck, giving Serrano a lot to think about in the second frame of this fight. Well, the corner of Turner is gonna be feeling a lot better about how this round is going so far. What an adjustment from Christian Turner. Cheyenne Serrano just tried the exact same outside trip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Christian Turner elevated the leg and said, no, I'm gonna toss you instead. You know, sometimes it takes guys a little bit to get started. I was a slow starter for, I think, the beginning of my career, and Turner really making the proper adjustments in round two, and he just seems way more intense, way more focused here in this round against Serrano. Three-time NCAA wrestling champion at Penn State University, Bo Nickel. Bo, we've seen a lot of grappling in this fight, a lot of pushing back and forth, going cage side to cage side. What do you think of the pace here? The pace is crazy, you know, these guys are definitely in good shape, um, pushing each other around, it's both of them utilizing underhooks, you know, that stuff wears on you a lot, so, you know, the fact that they're uh, in this good shape still keeping the pace up, just a testament to their training, and uh, you know, both these guys are working hard and they're showing it out here that they put a lot of work in getting up to these. Round two, slightly more than halfway gone, Turner, stiff jab. And, and another left. And Sean, he's making great adjustments with his striking as well. He's not falling forward. He's not blitzing or sprinting towards Serrano. He's keeping his base. He's landing shots from the outside, using long range weapons like jabs and push kicks down the middle. Incredibly impressive the adjustments that Christian Turner has made. Just 
Uh, he is, this is his fifth MMA fight. He was 4-0 as an amateur. This is his pro debut, as we've stated. Five fights in, and he's already listening to coaching that well. Randy, how long did it take you to absorb coaching in between rounds like that? <laughs> that is a challenge, and that's having a voice that you trust and hear at practice every single day so that you recognize that voice in the heat of it in here. Christian Turner got tired of letting the other guy lead the dance. In this second round, he has stepped up, and he is leading the dance in this round. You can see the... The strikes, they're almost even. Vitor, is Christian Turner taking over? Yes, Christian Turner is believing himself. That's what's the key of this. The, the, the fighting in MMA, you gotta believe in yourself and believe in your skills. So one thing he has to understand, every time that Serrano is a go for lefty, if he's attacked because he's a right-hander, so he's go to lefty to just to kick. As you can see now, he's getting the fight, the momentum. It's all about rhythm, you gotta stay. He has to advance, he has good jiu-jitsu and trust himself. Todd Gurley, is the difference here conditioning? It looks like Turner's still going strong. Serrano might be slowing down a little. Um, great conditioning, Turner. Turner's doing a great job this second round, being able to come back and, and make a comeback. Um, he's just, just, I'm just waiting for him to bring out that killer instinct. I know he has it in him. He just has to bring it out, and it looked like he's believing in himself more and more. Christian Turner inside the guard of Cheyenne Serrano right now. Ah, stop. Oh, headbutt. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Stop the time. The referee will pause the action. Over here, over here. Oh, we'll take man. a look at the rebound. That, that looked like a pretty obvious head, but I'll, I'll defer to you on this replay, down. Kenny. Right, don't do that. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if he was trying to posture up and he was pulled down or if he was actually trying to initiate that headbutt. Right here. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, that's a headbutt. <laughs> there, there was nothing, no other way to really interpret that. That seems like an intentional right, headbutt. Watch the head, watch the head coming in there. Here we go, time in. Referee Fight. decides not to take a point away. Interesting. Restart after that brief pause. Leg kick from Christian Turner and round two will come to a close. Interesting development there at the end. Yeah, I mean, I think Turner was was saved there, uh, you know, because obviously he was winning that whole round, unnecessary to throw the headbutt. If he, you know, I think a lot of referees would have taken a point away, and that would have been devastating to Turner. I think he lucked out there. Again, a... yep. Great uh, right hand at the beginning of round two that took out the mouth guard of Turner, but then Turner just really started to turn it on. Landed beautiful combination from the outside. Excellent long range weapons. Was staying disciplined. Beautiful combination there from Serrano. Turner jumped for a guillotine. Tried to get the finish here. Serrano doing a great job of staying composed. Fighting for risk control. Able to defend that. Turner was in control. End of the round and, and decides to throw that headbutt. And again, not a devastating one. It wasn't, wasn't a big one, but it was unnecessary. So we'll see what that does to the level of animosity in this third round. It's probably around a piece. Yes. As we enter the third. That's the way I have it, Sean. I think it comes down to this third round. I'm not sure if Serrano got tired, if he was taking a round off, or Turner was just that much better and smarter in round two. But here he is going right back to work. Beautiful timing on that takedown. And he's got that handcuff position oh. here. Yeah, this is a tough one. He's got that arm trapped. He could unleash with that left arm. Serrano trying to frame out and block that arm. It looks like he's trying to extend that right arm so he can get that back into play, but Turner goes right back to controlling right at the bend of the arm there, Sean. Excellent trap there by Turner. Keeping good head position so far, landing some good left hand shots. Nothing devastating, but he's effective and he's scoring. Serrano able to get both arms free again, but he's on his back. Yeah, 
Matt Turner again just continues to trap that right arm of Serrano, leaving him defenseless on that right side. I'd like to see Turner try to kick up the pace a little bit with that left hand. If he could posture up and land some more blows, I think he could start to hurt Serrano here. His coach is calling for him to step into the half guard, wants Turner to pass. Yeah, he could do it. He could push that leg down. As soon as those legs are open, he could do it with that left hand, push down on the knee and step over. He's once again isolated the right arm of Cheyenne Serrano. Left hand goes back to work. Now he doesn't have that cross wrist, but he does move into half guard now. And I think that was Serrano's opportunity to post on that elbow or hand and, and use the cage to wall walk there, to cage walk and get back to his feet. Now he's trying to do it. Turner, keep a good head position here, keeping Serrano on his back. This is huge for him as he moves into that second part of round three. Serrano, excellent job getting back to his feet here. He's got to do something, though. A little over two minutes left in this fight. Oh, Turner getting it done. Turner right into mount, it would appear. Half guard from Serrano. Randy, strong wrestling here in rounds two and three from Turner. Absolutely. Christian Turner stepped it up in the second round, started leading. The, the way, Let's and in this down. third Let's round, his wrestling has been very, very tenacious. I love that seat belt. Never seen anybody pull that off from the guard. Usually it's a much more effective position from the half guard, which is why his coaches are trying to get him to step over into that half guard. Oh, Turner. Turner has to advance on his game plan. So he has, has to trust his jujitsu, and he has to advance position because he's getting the fight on his hand right now. So I feel like, you cannot just fight to win. They got to advance. Right now, advance. Go to the half side. Go to the side. Put your knee in the belly. And, and looking for to finish. That's what's lacking him. That killer instinct. Well, Todd, both you and Vitor have, have asked for that killer instinct to be on display. We saw Turner just moments ago with some big time ground and pound. He, he's going for the finish. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. He looked like he, he didn't come to play today. Um, you know, he had that first round, but these last two rounds, he's been showing what he's capable of, and, and it looked like his training's been paying off for him. He got a lot of energy, um, so I'm, I'm excited. We approach 30 seconds remaining in this fight. You can see Christian Turner's strike totals climbing. Mm -hmm. Let's work, gentlemen, let's work. Yeah, and that's been the difference. You know, he's picking up the pace. And Serrano has just kind of been fading here at the end of this round. He's working hard to try to get back to his feet. But again, as, as far as gravity goes, as far as physics goes, he has to work way harder here in this position on bottom than Turner does. Closing moments of this fight. The up kicks don't land. Some ground and pound does. Fight comes to a close with Christian Turner on top. And we will go to the judges' scorecard on Challenger Series. It's pro debut on Fubo TV. What up, fight fans? I'll be a celebrity panelist with my boys Ray Lewis and Tyron Woodley on Friday 4-8. It's a second chance for fighters to win a contract into the PFL. So let's check out how the winners have been rolling with some knockout action in the PFL Challenger Series. The time is set. The stage is set. Your mentality will dictate your success. Oh. Ooh, nasty leg kick. Oh, oh the knee! Oh my goodness! Brucey Soto, the PFL <laughs> contract. Great combination. She pounded the brutal Oh my goodness! So welcome to PFL. It's a big shot there from Yandrova. This is like a painting of Picasso right now. Martina Yandrova gets the contract. Oh, big shot there. Oh, 
beautiful combination. Your newest professional fighters league featherweight fighter. Oh, oh right hand big combination. Oh, that's a right hand. That's gonna be it. Bruno Miranda receives a lightweight contract. With the heavyweights, they have a lot of respect because they know one slip and it could be lethal. Oh, oh big shot. Oh my goodness, one wow. punch through the armpit, and that's enough. Adam Koresh the newest member of the BFL heavyweight roster. Now those are my kind of finishes, the ones that never leave a decision to the refs. Now let's get back to Sean and Kenny, and I'll see you Friday night. Here's our carparts.com post-fight stats. Three big takedowns for Christian Turner. Of course, all of that wrestling for him coming in the second and third round. Well, this was an awesome fight. Beautiful timing on that takedown in round three. Excellent double, drives right through, keeps his feet moving, gets his shoulder in the right position and traps that arm as well. And this was really taxing for Serrano, who again is having to carry the weight of Turner, was fighting to try to free that right arm for a long period of that round. There's another beautiful takedown there from Turner. Keeps the pressure on, gets his shoulder in the hips, tries to advance in the mount, finishes strong, and Sean O'Connell has the official decision. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score the bout 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision, Christian Turner. Yeah! All right, let's get a little discussion here with our winner. Christian Turner, successful in your pro mixed martial arts debut at only 20 years of age. Uh, the first round wasn't what you wanted it to be. Second and third, you came out and won. What was the key to making those adjustments? Uh, just listening to my coaches and, you know, it got to a, a moment where you got to, you ask yourself, like, like, what's your why? And, you know, uh, I always heard something that if you really love something, passionate about it, that sometimes God is going to test you and see if you're really about it. And it got to the second round. I knew I was down. He had good striking. And I really had to go in, in, in my spirit and say, like, am I really built for this, you know? Uh, I've only been doing it a year and two months. I just got into it, man, and I'm going to get to the top, man. I'm going to be victorious. Um, I need that contract, man. I'm 20 years old. I need that contract. <laughs> I need the contract. <laughs> if he's got this kind of skill set after 14 months of training, goodness gracious. Over to you, JSB. Thanks, Sean. Randy, what impressed you most about Christian Turner's pro debut? Well, Christian, you did a great job. It looked to me like you were letting Cheyenne lead the dance in, in the first round. And then in the second round, you said enough of that. And you started making him react to you and dictating where this fight was going to happen. You showed a lot of well-rounded skills. Uh, you know, I guess at 0-0, we don't know if you're a slow starter. But I think you definitely made the adjustments you need to do. Great job. All right, Sean, back over to you. All right, thank you, Julie. What a no as a pro, Christian Turner. Yeah! Up next, our final bout of the pro debut evening, Stankovic and Brewington. That was Brewington. There is Stankovic next on Fubo TV. What up, fight fans? I'll be a celebrity panelist with my boys Ray Lewis and Tyron Woodley on Friday 4-8. It's a second chance for fighters to win a contract into the PFL. So let's check out how the winners have been rolling with some knockout action in the PFL Challenger Series. The time is set. The stage is set. Your mentality will dictate your success. Oh. Oh. Nasty leg kick. Oh, oh there's the knee! Brucey Soto, the PFL <laughs> contract. Great combination. She got a noodle knee. Oh my goodness! And welcome to PFL. Some big shot there from Yandrova. This is like a painting, a uh, Picasso right now. Martina Yandrova gets the contract. Oh, big.
big shot there. Oh, beautiful combination. Your newest professional fighters league featherweight fighter. Oh, oh right hand. big combination. Oh, there's a right hand. That's going to be it. Bruno Miranda receives a lightweight contract. With the heavyweights, they have a lot of respect because they know one slip and it could be lethal. Oh, oh, big oh shot. my goodness, one wow. punch through the armpit, and that's oh, enough. Adam Koresh, the newest member of the BFL heavyweight roster. Now, those are my kind of finishes, the ones that never leave a decision to the refs. Now, let's get back to Sean and Kenny, and I'll see you Friday night. Challenger Series action on Fubo TV. It's pro debut night, and earlier tonight, this heavyweight affair, Santino Zorita versus Rakim Tally. Back and forth, heavy power, both men's chin on display. But Rakim Tally with the outside trip and the wrestling, the grinding pressure against the barrier. Another takedown with a slam, and Rakim Tally victorious at 265 pounds in his pro debut. 1-0. And coming up now, welterweight action brought to you by Next Level Hydrogen Water. Three five-minute rounds at 170 pounds. Andrea Stankovic, Lewis Brewington, JSB, over to you. Our final fight of the night features a Serbian kickboxer taking on a well-rounded American in this welterweight matchup. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, former NFC middleweight champion, making my pro debut, Lewis Big Ape Brewington. Lewis Brewington wanted to be a fighter when he saw Forrest Griffin taking on Stefan Bonner in the first season of The Ultimate Fighter. Now he says his life has come full circle. He enters tonight with four straight wins. Fighting out on this Serbia professional kickboxer making my MMA debut, Andrea Stankovic. Andrea Stankovic learned kickboxing from his father, Zoran Stankovic, a European champion who was paralyzed from a car accident. His father trained Andrea and his brother from his wheelchair and continues to be their coach today. Welterweights are in the cage. We'll take a look at our next level hybrid water tail of the tape. Lewis Brewington, four years older, three inches taller, weighted in two pounds heavy. Five inch reach advantage and three inches on the legs for Brewington. This is our final pro debut of the night, the fifth. One contract, though, is on the line. All five winners are eligible. The PFL will narrow those five winners to two finalists. Our celebrity panel will select from the finalists and boom, contract to appear in the 2022 season. Lauren says it's round number one. Andrew Glenn ready to oversee the action. Ready? Ready? Stankovic in the black trunks, Brewington in the gray. Touch of the gloves, Brewington is the southpaw here. Stankovic kind of stalking, backing up Brewington so far. Brewington looks like he's trying to set up that left hand, that left cross. Stankovic very fast with his kicks. Brewington returns with a left kick of his own. A lot of length you can see in the frame and stance of Brewington, who now switches back and forth. Push kick from Brewington. Stankovic trying to deal with that lead right hand of Brewington, trying to get it out of the way so he can enter. Beautiful combination there by Stankovic. Curious to see what Brewington's strategy is here. Stankovic doesn't have MMA experience. Obviously, a, a extensive kickboxing background. Do you allow yourself to get into a kickboxing match here? 
Right. Well, for Brewington, you know, he definitely has the length advantage, but I don't think he wants to strike with Stankovic for too long. I think, you know, if I'm Brewington, I'm trying to test the ground game with Stankovic straight away. Oh, beautiful left hand right down the middle. Vitor Belfort, what do you think of the chess match on the feet so far? Stankovic is, is going, doing the right thing, but he has to trust, he has to fire right away. He has good striking. Brumington is doing a wrong thing. He's going to his power side. He, so he has to understand, he has used his kicks, his left kick. He's not, he's gonna be in trouble on the strike game. They gotta work the ball. A lot of kicks in the early part of this fight. About halfway through round number one. Well, Brunkin's length and his range is allowing him to get away with it, but as Stankovic starts going upstairs with that right high kick, that's where Brunkin can find himself in trouble circling to that left-hand side. Brunkin doing a decent job of keeping Stankovic out at arm's length. Shorter fighter, not really able to get into punching range super effectively so far. Yeah, I'd like to see more feints from Stankovic to allow him to get on the inside. Otherwise, Brewington's going to see everything coming. Randy, how do you get inside on a guy this much taller than you? It's, it's a challenge for sure, and I think Stankovic needs to get inside and, and use those combinations. Uh, he's, he's been fairly successful out of kicking range, landing a lot of nice shots. You, you wonder what Brewington's planning, circling towards his opponent's power, and there he accidentally slips and this is what it looks like when I try to hit kick people right there. <laughs> I flop on the ground. Uh, nice job getting right back up at Stankovic. Let him right back up. Brewington needs to use his length to find a way to get this to the, to the ground. He's got several submissions in his amateur career. I think that's the place for him to win this fight. When you saw Stankovic, even after the slip, didn't want any part of the groundwork. He allowed Brewington to stand back up, even though he probably could have jumped right down into side control, Kenny. Yeah, and I think that's a smart decision. You know, that's not gonna be his strength there, even if he was on top. All oh, beautiful left hand there by Brewington. Both of these guys showing a lot of relaxation and comfort in these striking exchanges. <laughs> Todd Gurley, measured pace here in round number one. Who's got the advantage for you early? I'm seeing my stank of it. I mean, Brunton, he has the, 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 the length and the reach, but, you know, stank, Stankovich is, is definitely trying to get up in there. So, um, he's he's on his backside right now, but, you know, I like the way he's been competing and uh, adjust off the length of uh, Brunton. We'll see if Brewington can make anything happen offensively here in the final 30 seconds of round number one. Right now inside the closed guard of Andrea Stankovic. Yeah, and Stankovic kind of has his head pressed up against the cage, which is going to take away a lot of his ability to attack with submissions. Crunched up, very uncomfortable on your back and neck. Brewington in a good position. If he postures up, can start to rain down blows, but he's running out of time. Stankovic relies on the bell to get him out of that bad position. Brewington not really able to mount any serious offense, although the takedown by itself does score. Yeah, and here's Brewington eating a kick off that lead left leg of Stankovic. Very fast kicks from Stankovic throughout that first round. Beautiful left hand right down the middle. You could see he was trying to set that up throughout that round. Excellent. Right high kick there, roundhouse from Stankovic going upstairs. And here's excellent level change and finish to that double leg from Brewington. I expect him to try to do that again here in round two. Kenny, relatively even round number one. Yeah. How do you score it? You know, that's a tough one to score. I thought Stankovic was a little bit busier. He was landing more on the feet. Brewington not throwing as much, but he was effective when he was. And I think landing that takedown, guys, getting some control back, at the back, end helped him as well, but certainly hang a close on, round. Hang on, guys. Hang on. Both fighters eager to get back sit to the back, action back, here. Back, Andrew back. Glenn sit back. forcing them apart. Hang on until we clear the cage, gentlemen. Hang on. All 
right? You ready? Yep. <laughs> they want to get right to it. Right to it. Get right back to it. Andrew Glenn says, go ahead. Sharp leg kick there from Stankovic. Oh, beautiful right high kick there by Stankovic. Right hand to the body attempt. And a left hook from Stankovic. Left hand landed there for Brewington. All right, the three-time Penn State wrestling, NCAA wrestling champion, Bo Nichols, been checking in throughout the evening. What do you think of round number one in the early part of round number two here, Bo? Definitely, you know, uh, strategic round one. Um, Stankovic, you know, clearly has a pretty uh, high-level kickboxing, and, you know, but Brewington's landing big shots, too, and then got that takedown at the end of the round. So, overall, pretty even fight, and Brewington's looking for a takedown again, but he doesn't get it, so, you know, we'll see who... You know, I think the fight's still to be decided at this point. Uh, Bo, when are we going to see you in a PFL cage? Is that happening? We'll see. You know, um, at this point, uh, I have one more amateur fight scheduled for April 15 um, in State College, PA. So I'm going to um, finish that. That'll be my third amateur fight and the, my last one. And then after that, I'll be going pro. So it's definitely uh, in the cards. So we'll see. Awesome. All right. Not fully committal there from Bo Nickel. By the way, uh, fighting that guy on an amateur MMA card <laughs> yeah. in State College, Pennsylvania, where he won three national championships? Come on. Yeah, that's that's tough. That's tough. Well, that's exciting. Hopefully, we get a chance to see Bo here in the PFL. That'd be awesome. But right now, Stankovic having a good round, too. There's a kick. Lance on the armpit. Bruinton sharp with that left hand. Yeah, he sure three is. Times in a row. Yeah, he sure is. He's landing it repeatedly. Stankovic not moving his head. He's not getting off the center line. He's not fainting. Bruinton not respecting him at all right now. Let go of that fence. Let go of the fence. Let go of the fence. Let go of the fence. Andrew Glenn warning several times Stankovic to let go of the fence. He probably won't let him get away with it again. Bruinton able to get Stankovic down to his back. And this is where the kickboxing experience, as extensive as it is for Stankovic, just doesn't help you. Yeah, that's right. Uh, really hard to do kickboxing off of your back, I've found. <laughs> and right now, Stankovic in a tough spot. Brewington not taking advantage, though. He's not being aggressive, trying to advance position. Now he is. Stankovic kind of allows Brewington just really walk into mount here. Now Brewington in a much better position, trying to drive his forearm into the neck of Stankovic. They posture up and throw some punches from the top. We'll oh. see if Brewington looks like he's maybe going to sit or perhaps set up a triangle. Set up perhaps a triangle choke gets too high. Stankovic is able to roll himself out from under. Leaves an arm behind though, and now he's in a triangle. This is tight, Kenny oh, Floyd. This is going to be a finish if Stankovic isn't able to posture out. He could also maybe combo with an arm lock as well. Stankovic is in a really tough spot. This is not good. Hammer fist. His shoulder's kind of out of it, Sean, so I'm not sure he, he's feeling the full effect quite yet. His elbow is almost past the cup of Brewington. The left arm not choking the left side of Stankovic's neck, but there's a read. Yeah, you see, he's going to get out. His shoulder's out, Sean. He's not getting the full choke. Wow, great defense there. Oh, wow. Stankovic. And that can be extremely demoralizing because that was tight. That was a finished position. And now you find yourself half mounted. Yeah, 100%. That could be demoralizing for sure. And Stankovic in a good position here, but not taking advantage with punches. Now trying to frame off the head of Brewington where he can create some space and land some big shots. Let's see if he does that. Randy, impressive sequence there for both men. Really nice attack from Brewington, but Stankovic was able to get himself out. Yeah, for a guy that that doesn't have a grappling background, he's sure able to slide out of some pretty tight positions. A choke earlier, and, and now this triangle choke. So, you know, he, he's definitely got some skills. Uh, surprised by Brewington that he didn't try to attack and get this fight to the ground sooner, honestly. And now Brewington finds himself stuck underneath Stankovic. Yeah, this has been a very strong round for Stankovic. Brewington had his moments, but not sure he did enough here in this round. Stankovic has been active. He's landed a lot of shots. He's escaped some 
tough positions and landed some good shots from the ground as well. We'll finish with both fighters on their knees, wrestling out the end of round number two. Oh, oh. Ruington with the hands on the hips as he goes back to his corner. Take me through these replays. Sir. Yeah, here's that beautiful right kick. That's the shot to throw against an opposite stance fighter. Brewington, nice level change, unable to do it. He decides to go to his back and try to attack from guard. Almost had this triangle, but Stankovic able to escape that left shoulder. You don't really see it here, but his shoulder is out. There it's tight, it's tight on the elbow. Not comfortable on the neck, but Stankovic able to not allow that right, that left side of his neck to get cut off. That's what's allowing him to survive and not get that blood shut off. He was able to land some hammer fists, escaped. Last round, last round, all right. What a round. Third and final round of our final fight of the pro debuts. And once again, Andrew Glenn has to physically push these two apart. We start round number three, inside striking range. Brewington in the gray trunk, Stankovic in the black. High kick blocked. The left hook misses for Stankovic. And Brewington's got to tuck that chin a little bit. He's got to watch out for that overhand right from Stankovic. There's that level change. Nice timing on the single leg. Let's see if Stankovic can sprawl out of this. He does get Brewington extended. That's not a good position for Brewington. He decides to slide into half guard. Stankovic does have the far side underhook here, which means his weight controls the body of Brewington. Brewington's gonna have to dig his own left arm into a control position if he wants to get up. Right now, he's content to hug and wait. Let's work here, Jim. Yeah, and this is where I'd like to see Stankovic at least try to chip away with that left hand. He can keep position with that right underhook. And just kind of hammer fist, chip away to the body, chip away to the head and score some points. Show that control. Andrew Glenn already asking for more work. Brewington working on that lockdown on the right leg of Stankovic. And that, that's a good way to control your opponent from, from, from bottom, but you really, you're tying yourself in that position. If you can underhook that left leg of Stankovic, you can start to extend him and maybe work on a sweep, but that's just a, really kind of pinning himself more than anything else. Yeah, both men really not very active. I think the referee's going to stand him up here if they keep doing this. Stankovic has been able to stay on top. Brewington's shoulders pinned to the mat, but meaningful offense hard to come by from this top position for Stankovic. These are nice chipping shots here from Stankovic. This is better. Now he's trying to advance position, trying to get through that half guard. And halfway through round three, it's looking pretty good for Stankovic so far, Sean. Well, if we entered this round at one apiece, you want to be the guy on top for sure. the judges are making a final decision here. But again, when you're talking about not only earning a win, but earning a contract from the PFL, right. that's a different story. You can't play the conservative safe win game. Indeed. There's that stand-up you were anticipating. And that sharp left hand once again from Brewington, who goes right back down to the takedown attempt. Good sprawl from Stankovic. A uh, nice circle away from Stankovic. Gets away from the cage. Good cage awareness there. Inside of two minutes here, Vitor Belfort. What are we looking at? We're gonna go to the judges scorecards or will we see a finish in the, the closing moment? Look like we're not gonna see a finish. Brimington is literally being a very undisciplined fighter. He has the ground, but he's just going for it. Right now he's desperate to get something and now the other fighters know. So 
is very key right now. He's not using, he has to use his uppercut. Stankovic is not using his uppercut. So that way, every time he swings and he's doing something, he's going to be taken down. So he's going to be very aware and, and very hesitant right now. Todd Gurley, fatigue showing for Brewington. He's shot a couple of those desperation takedown attempts. Can he make something happen late? Yeah, he's up. Uh, not looking like it. Not looking so good for Brewington right now. Stankovic, I, I like the way his momentum is flowing. Uh, just the aggressiveness, the whole fight. And it looked like Brewington is just trying to, trying to make something happen, but he just can't. Randy, inside of one minute for Brewington to potentially pull this one out if the judges' scorecards look like mine do, at least. What does he need to do? Well, I, you know, I, I just don't think he's applied himself. He has the skills. He's the longer fighter. He's obviously got some striking ability. He's got a great ground game. He just doesn't seem to have that killer instinct to go out and try and finish this fight. Stankovic, on the other hand, has that. Trying to head kick, trying to find ways with the skills he has to finish the fight. With that, Brewington concedes top position. There's Stankovic's brother in the corner, FaceTiming their father, who is a decorated kickboxer in his own right, and is their trainer. This fight will come to a close with Andrea Stankovic on top of Lewis Brewington in the pro debut for both men. Once again, we go to the judges' scorecards, and we will make this official when we come back on Fubo TV. What up, fight fans? I'll be a celebrity panelist with my boys Ray Lewis and Tyron Woodley on Friday 4-8. It's a second chance for fighters to win a contract into the PFL. So let's check out how the winners have been rolling with some knockout action in the PFL Challenger Series. The time is set. The stage is set. Your mentality will dictate your success. Oh. Oh. Nasty leg kick. Oh, there's the knee! Brucey Soto, the PFL <laughs> contract. Great combination. Should have pounded the Oh my goodness! So welcome to PFL. It's a big shot there from Yandrova. This is like a painting uh, Picasso right now. Martina Yandrova gets the contract. Oh, big shot there. Oh, beautiful combination. Your newest professional fighters league featherweight fighter. Oh, oh right hand. big combination. That's, a right hand. That's gonna be it. Bruno Miranda receives a lightweight contract. With the heavyweights, they have a lot of respect because they know one slip and it could be lethal. Oh, oh, big oh shot. my goodness, one wow. punch through the armpit and that's enough. Adam Koresh, the newest member of the BFL heavyweight roster. Now those are my kind of finishes, the ones that never leave a decision to the refs. Now let's get back to Sean and Kenny, and I'll see you Friday night. Welcome back to Orlando, Florida, and PFL Challenger Series action. There's a look at our Cajunomics post-fight stats. Stankovic and Brewington, they almost even in strikes landed there, Kenny. Takedowns in the advantage of Brewington, but the ground strikes for Stankovic Yeah, here's that takedown here from Brewington. Fails, drops down to his back. Stankovic able to get top position here. That was critical for him, making those adjustments in round two. Another shot from Brewington. Stankovic posting on the mat, getting his hips involved, getting Brewington, Brewington stretched out. That's not good for your base. Able to get on top again. Brewington tried very hard to shoot, he was able to get in on the legs, not able to drive through, got his base, got his structure compromised. Stankovic able to sprawl, land some shots from the top, and Sean O'Connell is in the cage with the decision. All right, referee Andrew Glenn will bring these two fighters to the center of the cage and make this thing official. And after three rounds, we once again go to the judges' scorecards. 
All three judges scored about 30-27 for your winner by unanimous decision, Andrea Stankovic. One and zero as a mixed martial artist. One and zero as a pro for the decorated kickboxer representing Serbia. And those four other men also improved to one and zero as pros tonight. When we come back, we will narrow the five winners down to two finalists, and from there determine who gets a contract in the PFL. What up, fight fans? I'll be a celebrity panelist with my boys Ray Lewis and Tyron Woodley on Friday 4-8. It's a second chance for fighters to win a contract into the PFL. So let's check out how the winners have been rolling with some knockout action in the PFL Challenger Series. The time is set. The stage is set. Your mentality will dictate your success. Oh. Oh. Nasty leg kick. Oh, oh there's the knee! Goodness. Brucey Soto, the PFL <laughs> contract. Great combination. She battered me. Brutal D. Oh my goodness. Welcome to PFL. It's a big shot there from Yandrova. This is like a painting of uh, Picasso right now. Martina Yandrova gets the contract. Oh, big shot there. Oh, beautiful combination. Your newest professional fighters league featherweight fighter. Oh, right hand! Big combination! That's a right hand! That's gonna be it. Bruno Miranda receives a lightweight contract. With the heavyweights, they have a lot of respect because they know one slip and it could be lethal. Oh, oh big oh shot! Oh my goodness, one wow. punch through the armpit and that's enough! Adam Koresh, the newest member of the PFL heavyweight roster. Now those are my kind of finishes, the ones that never leave a decision to the refs. Now let's get back to Sean and Kenny, and I'll see you Friday night. All right, welcome back to Challenger Series Action Week 7. It's the pro debuts. Five fights tonight. We got a little bonus, so that means five winners. We will narrow our five winners down to two finalists, and those two finalists will be eligible for a PFL contract in 2022. Before we narrow it down, though, President of Fighter Operations, Ray Seffa, with a message for all five winners. Yeah, for debuters, I thought everybody brought their, uh, a good fight tonight, so congratulations to the winners, and of course, thank you to the other guys that fought as well. All right, if you hear your name, please step forward. We're going to narrow this down to two finalists. Our first finalist, Alexei Pergande. And joining him as our second finalist, Andrea Stankovic. To you other three, congratulations on being 1-0. Please exit the cage. Take a look at the highlights here. The arm triangle choke. For the young man, only 20 years old and 1-0 in his PFL and professional debut. And the backflip, almost as good as mine. And in our final feature bout of the evening, representing Serbia. Andrea Stankovic, not only his pro debut, but his MMA debut after a successful kickboxing career, wrestles his way to a victory. When we return, one of these two finalists will receive a PFL contract right here on Fubo TV.
What up, fight fans? I'll be a celebrity panelist with my boys Ray Lewis and Tyron Woodley on Friday 4-8. It's a second chance for fighters to win a contract into the PFL. So let's check out how the winners have been rolling with some knockout action in the PFL Challenger Series. The time is set. The stage is set. Your mentality will dictate your success. Oh. Oh. Nasty leg kick. Oh, there's the knee! Goodness. Brucey Soto, the PFL <laughs> contract. Great combination. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness! Welcome to PFL. It's a big shot there from Yandrova. This is like a painting uh, Picasso right now. Martina Yandrova gets the contract. Oh, big shot there. Oh, beautiful combination. Your newest professional fighters league featherweight fighter. Oh, oh, right hand! Big combination! Oh, there's a right hand! That's gonna be it. Bruno Miranda receives a lightweight contract. With the heavyweights, they have a lot of respect because they know one slip and it could be lethal. Oh, oh big oh, shot! Oh my goodness, one Wow! Punch through the armpit and that's enough! Adam Koresh, the newest member of the BFL heavyweight roster. Now those are my kind of finishes, the ones that never leave a decision to the refs. Now let's get back to Sean and Kenny, and I'll see you Friday night. All right, welcome back to PFL Challenger Series Week 7. It's the pro debuts, and this is the whole reason we are here. Two finalists, one of these men will receive a contract. And the task of deciding who receives that contract falls solely on the shoulders of our celebrity panel tonight. For that, we get it over to Julie Stewart Binks. Sean, both fighters with impressive pro debuts, but only one contract is awarded. Randy, who did the celebrity panel pick? We had a unanimous decision in Alexei Pergande wins the contract. Alexei Pergande receives a PFL contract. The only finish on the card tonight, a 20 year old with a boxing background and now four submission victories, 1-0 as a pro. And it gets better for Alexei Pergande, by the way. Not only does Alexei Pergande win a contract in the PFL, but our Columbia Care move of the night and a $5,000 bonus for that arm triangle choke. This, of course, the move that finished his pro debut. He's 1-0, he's now a PFL fighter. He's $5,000 richer. He's almost as handsome as I am, and he can do a backflip. <laughs> Incredible performance for Alexei Pergande. Welcome to the PFL. Be sure to join us next Friday for the final week of the 2022 PFL Challenger Series. Second chance night, the last shot for some of the most exciting fighters from this season to earn a BFL contract.